Yes, yes. So uh, I'm going to recap real quick because I forgot to record. So the question is, it's asking us to find out how many people tested negative or did not use. And we have 168 people who tested positive, 35 people who, uh, who are false positive, so right here. Uh, so we had 168, which is given, 35 of that's not, and we can find out the number who did use and tested positive by subtracting this from this to give us that. Then we had 165 tests negative, three who were false negative, so they tested yes when they, or tested no when they did use. So you find this number by subtracting the total from the no, but yes, gives us 162. And I tend to highlight everything that they're asking for and then add them all up, which gives you this. And then you divide by 333. Then, which gives us this right here. Excel, once again, will normally give you a really long number, which doesn't make sense. So if you want to do what the test wants you to do to get the right number, you hit Control-1, which brings up this. It was up here at General. I clicked on Number and changed the decimal places to be what Pearson wants you to re report. Now that I've caught up to where I was before, we can do another problem. So let's see what else we got. Uh, I would rather do the math. Hmm. Oh, I can go over that. That's a really quick question. So, Let's go over the probability of an event versus the probability of not an event. So this was on the test. So I'm gonna go over the probability of an event, which I'm gonna call uh, use versus the probability So this will usually have a bar above it. It will have, uh, for people online, I'm literally trying to do a bar above it. That means not. So if I'm going to find the probability of drug use, what I have to do is find the total number of people who use. So, which is 136. And then I had to divide that by, let's go ahead and write myself, the total number of user people. That gives me the probability of a user. To find the other one, which is the probability of not being a user, I could take 197 divided by 333 but don't work too hard. The easier way to do this is one minus the probability of a user because there's only two outcomes on here. The probability of being a user and the probability of not being a user. So your probability of being one of those two is 100%. So instead of doing more division, possibly making an error, take one minus your previous answer since you already had to calculate that and it gives you your fact. Once again, number three, and those should add up to, just to check, this plus this, probably 100%, which is what you need, remember, because you're doing that now, for total probability, is you, everything has to add up to 100% on probability distributions, okay? Yeah. Uh, no, but the previous one asked for three, so I'm assuming it's going to be three. You could change that to be whatever Pearson wants. You're supposed to do, based on science, one decimal pass which you can record for significant figures, for those of you who remember those nonsense, whether you use it or not.
Where did I put my mask? I'll find it later. Did it fall in? No, whatever. Okay. That covers that one. I went over z-scores last time, correct? Or do you want me to do another z-score? Another one? Another one. I'm if I do three a day, it's not going to make a difference anyway. Okay, so z-scores. I'm going to do it on Excel because it's easier. Uh, escape. So, for a z-score, you need an x value, a mu value, which is that guy. Value, and you need a standard deviation value. That thing. Uh, people online, I'm just drawing the, I don't know if you can kind of see it or not. I'm both I guess I could stop hiding self view and look. Uh, show self view. Really quick, you can kind of see it, kind of not. Those are the values I'm copying. So the top one is the P bar, second one is mu, third is standard deviation. We're doing it for like three audiences at once. Uh, so, so if I have an awkward question, like an award ceremony for the best actor was 36, the age was 36, uh, and the age of the winner for the best actress was 56, which is odd ages actually. All best actors, the mean age is 43.5, and the standard deviation is 6.9. For the best actresses, the mean age is 36.9, with a standard deviation of 12.1. Relative to their genders, who had the more extreme age when giving the award? So this is kind of a weird one. I want to make different numbers because this is a question. So if I do 38 as my X value, because the X value is always the value that you're looking at. So the person who won for best actor was 36. So this is X of actor. And the, me the mean of the actor, let's call it, uh, 42.8. I'm just making up numbers. They don't have to mean anything. And my standard deviation for actor is call it 7.2. So it's the question asked extreme value, right? Uh, so which is the most extreme value? What they're looking for is which has the biggest Z value. That's what they're looking for. So I'm going to do the one at a time and then I'll pull the other one up. So the formula for Z is your X minus your mu divided by standard deviation. Remember, if your value is positive, that means you're going to be greater than the mean. If your value is negative, it's going to be less than. So if you forget the order from this, just realize, is my x value going to be greater than what I expect or less than what I expect from my mean? And you'll correct yourself pretty quick. That quick little check. So If the x is less than mu, you're correct. If it's a negative number, if you're looking at smaller values, basically. So on this one, I can just calculate the z as open equals open parentheses. So I'm going to look at the x value minus the mean value and divide it by the actor. 
and that gives me my z-score. Um, so it tells me that the actor is slightly less than the mean age for this one. So I would, if I was doing this, I wouldn't even bother redoing this, but I just do is actor z is negative point to root seven, because it's the same thing, it's just repeating. And then if I've got more information, so I'd probably just get rid of this just to make my life easier. And I had, let's say, the best actress was 52. And the mean age for actresses was 35.7 with a standard deviation of 12.5. I can deal with that. That gives me a Z value for the actress of 1.3. Because that Z value, when it looks for the more extreme, ignore positive and negative. How far are you away from zero? Because the Z value for actress is further away from zero, it's the more extreme outlier. Therefore, it's more outside the norm. Okay? Does that help with the Z values a little bit? So the Z value is nothing more than like a standardized set of values away from what you expect in a normal distribution. That's what it is. Do I rant about normal distributions? Because this is the last question for homework for the, the test because we've gone over three. Do you want me to rant? Okay, so I will. Normal distributions assume that you get people randomly from a population. My issue with that is people who try to do this assume a normal distribution to a selected audience. So for instance, I'm not necessarily you guys, but my last class. The last class I taught here was Math, math 374, which is college or calc-based statistics a 300 level engineering class. Would you consider that the average student even at GCU, let alone Phoenix? No. <laughs> nope. No, not even close. Um, I'm pretty sure most of them knew calculus way better than I ever will and never really want to. Uh, but because of that, whenever I talk about standard, I knew like tons more stats than them, so it's okay. Um, when it comes to standard deviation and this assumption, they don't qualify. I don't even care about when you get the normal distribution or central limit theorem. They kind of blow everything out of the water. I had a girl who got 101% into the last test in the class. That's, that's not normal any class. So uh, let alone that annoying level of a class. So. Your standard deviate or your standard norm depends on taking it from a standard group. The second you start making selections and you start cutting it down, you start getting different things. So whenever you go to college, you should never have a curve, off of a bell curve. You should never have your grades adjusted based on the highest person in the class because it's gonna disproportionately hurt the worst students in class. Yes. Yes. Yes, they do. But you usually have, and I'm not gonna keep it a joke, three to four students who get like near a perfect score on everything, especially organic chemistry. And it ruins the curve. Because you have a lot of people who are kind of like struggling in D to F land. They could be getting it, they could be working their took us off, but they just won't do it because there are three or four students who either already know it or they have all day to study it or they just get it. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I was that guy in Orgo 2 because I got chirality without trying and it was really weird. So I ruined the curve in that section without trying because I had a weird mind. So because you're doing selection, because you're getting those different students in different classes, especially higher level classes, a normal curve doesn't work because of selection. And the smaller the class you get, the worse it gets. 
if you're like at a 100 level class with like 400 students in it, it works because you're going to get a decent number of people who are really good, a decent number of people who are going to flunk out of college, and then everyone else is in the middle. Usually what happens. But as you get higher level classes, you kind of, you're supposed to throw those out. It's one of the best, best advice I ever got. And if I had free reign for grades, this is what I would do is you grade by groups. You have, you know, you have the, the high achievers that get A's, so you don't have to worry about them. And you get like a group of four or five people ranging from 84 to 92. Well, congratulations, A to A minus. And then you just kind of group people because they tend people, like grades kind of group together and you just kind of choose how they would act and stuff like that. But it's up to individual institutions what they let you do. So, okay, so that's my little rant on the standard curve. And it's, it's, it's bad. Okay, so homework problems. Any problems? Anybody started on the homework much? I can look at it and see what problems we got. See if I haven't done anything. Mm. Let's go to some random. Forever to do standard deviation on the binomial distribution. Oh, one problems. sec. I can barely hear you. It takes forever to do standard deviation on the binomial distribution problems, by the way. Oh, standard deviation binomial? Yep. Okay, I'm going to look that up. It takes forever. Uh, I'm going to look it up because I don't really do that much. All these things. Let me see, which question was that? You know? I don't off the top of my head, no. Uh, I'm thinking maybe like nine or something like that. I think that was the first one that we had. Oh, uh, that's a that's a lot of comp question for me. Not sure then, but you know, we had a few of them. I'm looking. Find the probability that six customers are randomly selected, exactly four of them are comfortable with delivery by drones, NP, and XP and Q. Let me get the book up. How is the book on this thing anyway? Terrible? Yeah, that's what I expected. Great. Okay, so let's try this. Wait, wasn't there the... Okay, where's the... Okay. So I have a question I'm going to change numbers on because I'm not gonna get the right answers anymore. Got me a couple times on that, I'm gonna stop. But this is based off of, I think, question 12, if anyone's on there. It says, the number of surveys assume 42% of customers, yada, yada, yada. So, yeah, so people can see. So we have to do N, X, P, and N, X, P, and Q. Okay, so we're supposed to find the probability that when six customers are randomly selected, so I'm gonna say um, based on a survey, although I do like the number 42, uh, assume that 38% of consumers are comfortable having drones deliver. Let 
their purchases. What is the probability of five or one of when seven people are old? Exactly three of them are comfortable. And once you identify these guys over here. So the N is the and his number of trials. Uh, so n would be the number of people polled. Uh, polled, not polls. So n would be seven. That's the number of people polled. X would be the number of people who were, that you're looking for, three. Uh, P is your success, which would be 0.38. And your Q is one minus your success. So your N is gonna be bigger than your X, which makes sense, because your N is your number and X is your success among the trials. Remember, success does not necessarily mean a good thing. It's just what they're looking for. And then the probability is not fun to calculate. Um, so the probability of, uh, where am I at? The probability of X is equal to, uh, is that, I'm trying to remember, what was the exclamation mark? Uh, permeation, or something. Try to remember what exclamation was, my brain is turned off again. Uh, factorial, factorial, okay. So we're doing factorial. Do a factorial of n here. Divided by, and then I'll open parentheses again. We have n minus x in another parentheses minus x. Oh wait, that's supposed to be factorial. Yes. I mean, this is supposed to be a fact. And minus x, and then another fact of times factorial x So all and then that's timed by probability to the number of successes times Q to the number of successes minus the number, or number minus successes. Yes, that's, that's literally the formula. Um, the formula is, so probability of X is equal to N prime divided by, I'm going to do the bottom half over here, N minus X factorial, X factorial times P to the X times Q N minus X. Over here on the board, P to the X 
plus Q and E and minus X. Yeah. It is a combination, but you do the combinations times the probability of X and the Q of N minus X. So the textbook actually is not as terrible as it looks, believe it or not. So then for this problem, you just find all that information then. Like I said, I just made this and I will upload this again. So I have done the annoying work for you. Um, and the probability, uh, is, is it ever asked for the Q of X? Let me see, see if it does ask for it in here. And if so, I will add it using technology. They do, oh, I guess you could have done that. They tell you to use it, but they don't actually tell you. Ah, yeah, imagine that. Okay, so there's that. Let me see what else I can find. Hit a button randomly. Binomial distribution. I guess having that formula up there will probably make binomials a lot easier, won't they? Um, how do you do binomial? Let me see if I could do, figure out how to do binomial of, uh, it was in the text, the, your textbook, which actually I've seen worse, by the way. It had where you could set binomial based on multiple parts. I know the other X, so any tab. No. Okay, so let me see if I can do binomial in Excel. So in this case, if we have seven people. So we have x, probability of x, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. Let me move this over real quick. Uh, this, oh, so you can do number of success, trials, probability. So binomial dot this, this will do the same thing. Success comma, trials, comma, probability. Why is it good? Ah, so you can do cumulative or probability mass function. So if it's gonna ask for up to that point, you use cumulative, otherwise you use the mass function. So let's go true. Yeah, that's fix that's for me. Why does it have B3? And then I can just hit Oh. But this is going to be I did something wrong. Number of successes, so this is going to be H2. And then everything else. So I just kind of cheated. So what I did is I created a table of a cumulative probability binomial distribution. So I did the same thing. Let me make I can't make it bigger. So it's a binome.dist is the function. It's asking for the number of successes, which I created a table. 
So zero through seven. And then it's asking for my number, which I use the dot, the thing to say that I had seven. And then uh, ask me for whether I want to do cumulative or mass function. So if you're looking for individual, you use mass function because it will choose at that moment. If you do cumulative, it will tell you how many up to that point. Then I copied it and pasted it and it went and did all of them. So if it's gonna ask you if you want more or less or up to that point, how many are less than three, you can do use this to solve those types of questions. You just put in successes, you can put trial, you can change everything into the other one to be whatever you want for numbers, copy it down, and just change your probability in order to do it. This will calculate at any particular point. All you have to do is change everything here. The other one will change it for cumulative, which is one of the tricks I learned is to make two functions so that you don't have to get confused with which number you're looking at. Maybe. I'd have to look. I think binomial might have been on there, but if you got this and you've done a couple of these, if you have the tools, it gets really easy. It's literally just plugging the numbers in and getting the answer. I will double check whether or not it's going to be on the test in a little, uh, by next week. Um, but you have a tool now. All you have to do is copy it and put it into whatever your master Excel sheet is. Um, okay, so that's that. What else? Let me get rid of that. There is a lot of questions which are like no math required. It's just like logic. Like what is a random variable? What isn't a random variable? Stuff like that. Oh, geez. Don't randomly guess on tests, please, ever. So your homework has a lot of binomial, sorry. Um, what else? What other questions? I just realized I have P. P. Up. Oh, I don't, it just you know, went over, okay. Or are we about to the end of the I can't think period? I'm okay if, if you guys just want to have like 40, 50 minutes, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. I hate to sound callous. I get paid the same. Um, but I mean, we did cover probably the annoying content that which looking at your homework, this will cover a lot of it. Um, we might go over mean and standard deviation next time a bit, maybe, I don't know. But even that was kind of on the z-scores that we kind of covered. So, um, and I did my rant for the day, so that makes me happy. If you guys got nothing, you guys can run away. Um, I will have next week's DQs up, hopefully by Saturday or Sunday. I'm getting my second COVID vaccine, yay, tomorrow. So if I feel like shit, it's not gonna get up to Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> Cause apparently it hits hard. And I don't have to find my mask, where did I put it? Did I sit on it? I'll find it. Okay. Online people, you have any questions or no? Okay.
Auf Wiedersehen. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Ah, someone's responding in German. Yay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.